you remember the first time you wrote a recursive function that worked? The first time you were able to calculate the Fibonacci sequence using recursion? You felt like you had unlocked a superpower, like you had achieved a new level of programming enlightenment. Well, I was young once too. I'm older now, and I realize the mistakes that I've made in the past. Recursion is useful, don't get me wrong, but on embedded systems, recursion is highly discouraged. Here's why. The main reason people hate recursion on embedded systems is because embedded systems typically have limited memory space. The STM32 blue pill, for example, from my previous videos, only has 20,000 bytes of RAM. You may be asking, wait, how does the way that I write a function in code using recursion affect the amount of RAM that my system uses? And that's a good question. To answer that, we need to understand how a function call works at a low, low level. When a function is called, under the hood in the assembly, the processor is allocating memory to store the local variables for that function. Those local variables live in what is called a stack frame. This stack frame has enough room to contain every local variable that, that function may need. So here, for example, I have a function foo written in C. Foo uses four integers, A, B, X, and Y. Each integer is four bytes wide, so therefore foo's stack frame will be around 16 bytes long. If we zoom into the assembly language for foo, we see a subtract instruction is used to make room on the stack for those variables at the beginning of the function. Now, if we do logic inside of the function foo using a for loop, for example, no extra memory will get used. The stack frame stays the same size and the logic runs in the context of the function foo whose stack frame already exists. If we do logic inside of this function using recursion, however, that's where things start to get out of control. Every time we recurse, the stack frame of the called function gets reallocated, occupying another 16 bytes of stack frame space. Even though some of those variables may not get used in the case for our recursion, the processor is still instructed to occupy space for them. If our recursion logic goes on for too long, it is 100% possible that we eat up all the memory on the processor with our stack frames and eventually crash it. Should we throw recursion completely out the window? No, of course not. But we should make recursive states safer with some easy safeguards. The biggest one is to set a max recursion depth. By checking how deep your recursion is with every call, you can limit the amount of memory your recursion logic uses by setting a max depth. So if you're programming on a system with gigabytes and gigabytes of RAM, then have at it, recurse to your heart's content. But if you're an embedded developer, be weary of the next time you calculate the thousandth digit of the Fibonacci sequence on your ARM Cortex M3. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe for more information like this and leave a comment below and tell me why you either love or hate recursion. We'll see you next time.